Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to ask a question, is your room working with your music? I get a lot of calls and I see a lot of room forms that come in where I'm really wondering, you know, who's working with whom in, in the situation, you know, is the room fighting the music? Is the music fighting the room? Uh, does the clients just not know what's going on? What, what's the real issue here? So let's forget about the human factor in it and let's just look at what the room requirements are walk through a few examples and i think you'll get an idea uh, of what we need to do the acoustic treatment of of any room is to do one thing and that's to get rid of the room it's to make the room go away so that you're not hearing the artifacts of the room you're not hearing the ceiling the walls the floor the noise coming through the structure so any good design of acoustical treatment is going to include all the technologies to make the room go away. And that's all dependent on distance, size, volume, and we've done numerous videos on those. So, free space. Best sound you'll ever hear. Take your system outside, set it up in a really quiet area if you can find one. And put a chair in front of your two speakers and sit about six feet away. That's the best you'll ever have in sound. Because you'll have no room. You'll have only one boundary surface, and that's the earth. And with that, we can pretty much live with. So, free space is our goal. That's the balancing act of absorption and diffusion treatments in their application to get that free space listening experience. So... What kind of variables are we up against in our room? Obviously, the speaker has to match the size and volume of the room. Can't put too much energy in too small of a room. Speaker boundary interference effect. Our room boundary surfaces are always in the way. We always have to manage them. Some surfaces are more critical than others, depending upon usage. But every boundary in our room is an issue. Okay. Low frequency source location. I see this a lot with home theaters. I see a lot of people that put the sub up front um, next to the speakers, close to the speakers, in the corners, which is something you never do. But the low frequency source, the subwoofer works on pressure, not localized energy. So you don't really need it up front to localize it because you're not localizing it anyway. You're feeling it. So it's not the same kind of speaker. It's not the same kind of energy generating source as your speakers are, okay? It needs special care. It needs a special location because it produces waves of energy that fit in almost no room. So you have to be really careful. Here's another thing that you have to be really careful of. You have to know what your issues are in the low frequency area and you have to sign the correct type amount and positioning of the treatment you can't just put something here or put something there without knowing why you're doing it the amplitude and frequency of the problem in the room and the size and volume of the room will tell you location and i can show you how to do that in another video treatments what are our options we have absorption and diffusion those are the only two I've been doing this 40 years, I can't think of any more. Yeah, there's all kinds of fancy names. There's hybrids that companies give to products to make you think that it's a new category, but it's really not if you look at the science behind it. So only two tools that we have in our toolbox. We have to be very, very careful how we use them, where we put them, and, and how many we use. So let's take some examples to give you an idea how different things are in different usages. Home theater, diffusion, ceiling and rear wall almost constantly. Okay, why are we doing that? Because we want to open the room up. We want to make it sound larger. The Dolby Atmos rooms, we have to be a little careful with diffusion on the ceiling, but we'll talk about that in another video also. Two channel listening rooms, side walls. Very, very critical, the rate and level of absorption on the side wall because it's directly responsible for central image definition and separation. That time signature on that reflection off the sidewall mixing with the direct energy is critical. You can't just use any type of absorption. You can't use building insulation that was designed to keep your room or house warm or cold. You have to use technology that was 
specifically designed for voice and music. Okay, live, control, master rooms all have different qualifications. The difference between a live and a voice room, night and day. Same technologies, but the amount and position of all of them, it would be very different. So try to do no harm in your room with your setup. Try to take into account that everything has value and good quality sound in a room is about doing a lot of little things correctly, but more importantly, in the right order. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.